how are we gonna start the video off? Yeah, we're gonna flex a Gungnir. Let's go. So it's actually frightening to see uh, in global elite matchmaking. More often than not as well in face it, when it comes to 2.5k elo to 3k elo people, that they don't know the basics of, well, how to play Mirage. So welcome to Mirage for noobs. I'm here to show you the basics of Mirage. Cool. This video is sponsored by WD Black. For my storage stream recordings and everything revolving around saving data, I've used Western Digital Externals for as long as I've been working with gaming slash esports content. So I'm absolutely delighted to have them back on this channel once more. Streaming a lot of CSGO as well as editing so much videos, I have to have flawless performance to not waste any time and be as productive as possible. So WD Black sent me the new product, the SN850 NVMe SSD, and let me experience it firsthand. It's just what you need. Crazy read write speed, no lags at all when gaming, recording or doing both at the same time. Top notch. On top of that, it does look fancy too, with a good and customizable RGB lighting. Honestly, there was and still is no negative thing I could state about it at all. Nothing better I could have asked for. If you want to learn more about it and check out the details yourself, head to the link in the description and check it out in the WD Black store. Thank you. T-Side spawns. In any demo of a professional player or something that I've watched, there's always a couple of spawns that people use. One, the spawn for top mid. You just run uh, close to the wall, sort of. And then you can jump like in the back and peek window. Or you, you don't even have to jump. You can just peek window like this with the op. That is not a guaranteed kill, but it is a very good chance that you get a pick like this. Same thing roughly if you have this spawn or even this spawn. Or if you have this spawn, you can also just go for a B peek, which is what I like to do. Like you just run, you know run to the B apps. Maybe you have a guy behind you that is holding underground. There's sometimes nice people. You jump on the bench and you peek if somebody's jumping around. Why on the bench? Because you have a little bit of an elevation. Like if you go in front of here, right? You don't have the elevation, but if you are standing on the bench, you do. So that makes the shot slightly easier. Unless the B player knows how to jump B properly. I'm getting a pick like this more often than not as well. Then same goes for Mirage A. If you have this spawn roughly or this spawn, you can use that to peek into ramp or do some fancy pantsy other stuff, but peek the cross. I would always, or what I do is always just peeking the cross. If somebody crosses, he's usually, if you peek up here, somewhere around here, so you can pre-aim like the first left side of the bench, stuff like that, and then get a kill. And you don't run out instantly and get killed by the CT op or something, get traded, but you go back. You use that advantage. You could also do the boost stuff here and stuff like that, but that is not necessarily... That, that already goes into detail that I don't want to touch on. Those are the spawns that I would say you should definitely always, in a way, use or abuse. Maybe, just maybe, you could, if you have a spawn like this, you could run Palace while the window smoke pops. You could go and peek jungle and see if the guy runs into you or rotates into you. This is also a very decent chance that that happens. But other than that, those spawns and the plays that I just showed you is what I deem essential. Cool. Now to the smokes. Like, we need to know the default smokes on A. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't. Star smoke. You go here. Something like that. You aim here, it doesn't need to have to be 100% precise, but it's rather easy. The CT smoke. You go around here. You know, do you see that white thing in the middle? You aim at the wooden thing a little bit to the right and jump from. Uh, Let's just have a look. This is what it looks like. CT. Then you have stairs. And then the third one for an AX egg is the jungle smoke. I'm not necessarily throwing it that often, so excuse me if it doesn't lie like properly. Like you tuck yourself in the second pillar. Just here, a little bit to the left, a little bit down, and throw. And it should be Boom. pretty damn good. Cool. What people should do as well is usually if you have a full if you have an exec like that, 
use your Molotov. The first guy who runs out, you can Molotov the bench position. The second guy, Molotov sandwich. The third guy, Molotov's on the shadow. Rather simple Molotovs, which you can do on the fly in any pug or in any matchmaking. These three is what should be thrown. Then the next smokes that I feel like you should know too is the two top middle smokes. One of them is in this corner. You can throw it by aiming around this left, this right. Then you have this couple, this little triangle like in the middle between those two. And the second one, if you jump on the top here, you just aim to the antenna on the right and you throw that. The first one doesn't have a gap. The second one would have had a gap. So the first one is if somebody jumps up short, if he's up on there, then, you know, it's still very hard to spot. And he can't shoot somebody through that gap. But you see the second smoke, it has a gap, so that one could net the kill easily as well. The first without a gap is only for the window player, so to say. The second one kind of, you know, does everything. The Mirage B Arch smokes left and right. The right, you go here in the corner. Like you just press W until you can't move anymore. Then you're looking for this spot. You see this one? So, you know, in between this. And you just jump through. Then the other one, you go, you go uh, to the pillar here. You move to the left. And you aim on the top here. Jump bro. Da -da 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 -da. Hello. And welcome to the baby bomb set. Cool. And then the kitchen window smoke. It's also rather easy and simple. You just tuck yourself into that corner here. Aim on the top of that building. Like right here. Actually, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. And then you just jump row again. Da -da 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 -da. Hello. Good smoke. See, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. But, you know, you get the job. Cool. Uh, variation of the arch smokes, if you want to contact B and set it up a little bit like this. Window frame, right side. Shown here. This edge, the antenna, in between those two. Left click. Second arch smoke, go here, below, straight line, good, cool. Something, 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 something around that corner. Throw, left click, Not, no jump throw, nothing, just a left click. And that one was a little bit scuffed, but yeah, you get the point. Two arch smokes from the B side. This is kind of what I deem essential that you need to know on the T side. Now, how about we swap CT? And see what's up on CT. Let's go on the CT side from left to right. That means from B to A on the radar. First and foremost, very important, communicate if you do something else out of your actual spot. That means if you are a short player and you have a really good spawn and you want to use that spawn, you tell your team. Second of all, it would be really nice if people start communicating how many people they see, what they see, etc. etc. Instead of being a B player, for instance, that gets flashed once and is yelling, it's B. That's not good. The B player. Just a quick rundown. Let's think about the piss round. A lot of people are playing B uh, rather far back in a corner tucked, or they are tucking themselves back sight like this, which I deem to be very bad. If people are pushing with a kitchen smoke or with arch smokes and uh, whatever, or they just uh, Molotov something and flash one, flash two, Chances are you're going to get overrun when people are jumping out the window, jumping on the bomb site and stuff like that, unless you play against not so good players, which you can basically win the round just by aiming. But that should never be the case. You should put yourself into a proper position. So as a B player in the pistol round, or I would go and jump spot maybe. I don't think that people with the Glock will instantly kill you while jump spotting. Or if you have a decent spawn, you can go onto the car here. Or you can go in the corner and jiggle peek. Why doing this is because in case there's a contact or a rush or something similar, you have really early information. You can fall back. You can take a shot here. You can fall back, take a shot here again, take a shot here again. Or you could even go towards bench and take a shot here. Do this, do that. You can always like fall a little bit back. The B player's job is to have presence, not die instantly. 
and get the information really quickly for the rotations in. That's the B player's job. I know it's not a flashy job. Stay alive, feed the information to your teammates. That's it. B player's positioning. Uh, if a B player is jump spotting all the time, also not really good. I swear to God, I often get such an easy entry kill if people are jump spotting, like I've shown you before with the op. So what you can do as a B player is you can play fully passive, just hold the window there. You gotta communicate that to the short player, or sometimes you can play like this, get like a peek in, or play this spot. I like this spot. If I ever play B, which I usually don't do, like on the edge of the box, and then just hold this. Remember to not sit down, because if you sit down, your model gets a little bit thicker, and you are gonna be visible from a player that is like watching this angle. And then you're most likely gonna get shot and die, and they can overrun you and B instantly, or take the short player contact. Yada, yada, yada. Or you could play from bench like this. In case they jump out, you hear a sound cue. In case he's like someone walking into your crosser, that's good as well. Just always be able to communicate to the other teammate on short. Or you can play on top of this box. Then you can spot here into B apps. Or you can even spot here, and then go back, spot here, or take a fight here. Or even jump back and then reposition and take the fight here. The B player just needs to stay alive and be, as I like to call it on the T side, if he's not instantly peeking to me and yada, 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 is be a pain in the ass for any T player that is trying to search B side to get an opening. How often do you have a B player who's taking the fight, he dies, but if I would have gotten the kill, it would have been fine. Yeah, but that's not what you should play for. You should not play for the if you're the anchor. You're the rock of the team when being a B player. Same goes for the A player. So that means that you, you're you not there to take the fights. You're not there to search the kills. You're there, so this is shut down and there is no entry zone. This is what a B player plays. The B player is, as I like to call it, the bitch of the team. Shout out to Perfecto. Joins Navi as the new fifth player and gets the bitch of the team role. Short player runs out of kitchen. First thing he does is he listens to B apps either for the steps or if he hears a scope, which can happen if the T player has a really good spawn. And if he hears a scope, he turns around and tells the B player to not jump spot or peek or anything like that because there's a bad boy op and a bad boy zoom aiming towards him will most likely result in a kill and then it's a 4v5 within the round start. That is not optimal. So information needs to be fed really early to the B player. Then what you can do as well, if they're coming out middle, is uh, flash. Just jump throw, left click, doesn't even have to be perfect. Flash above window, maybe. Just to take the control, to support the window player or the con player. Um, you can also smoke connector from here. I do that a lot to re-smoke connector. So the connector player has something. Uh, Molotov underground. Maybe Molotov even here in front of it. Use your grenades to support your teammates based off of the information. If the information is that nobody's out or somebody top of the boxes, you can also Molotov it like this some somehow. Or you can also Molotov it a little bit safer like this. So he gets forced a little bit to the left side. Or you can nade boxes. There's many possibilities, but the short player, what I feel, is somebody that needs to get out here. In case there is a smoke lying on short, that's roughly like this, you can always go through the short smoke. I like to go close to the wall here and then peek through it with the AWP. Or you can also just walk out of here, but obviously you are exposed to a lot more angles and the crosshair adjustment will be rather hard. So if you're not necessarily furious in his peak times, which was like two years ago, um, you're not going to get the kill. <laughs> You could also go ahead, what I like to do a lot is play this corner in case they run up on short or something. You're obviously also always tied to the information that the window and the connector player is feeding you. That is the synergy that the free players need to have. Window, connector, short player. Good communication, good nade usage in that sense. Now we are going to talk about the window player. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the window player. Hi, the window player. This is not how you're supposed to play window. You run up. Oh, guys, I'm smoked window. No. There's a million of different possibilities uh, as a window player. 
So this is the top spawn that you can get as a window player. You run into middle right here. The window player can jump up on this shelf and then peek like this. It's a rather common peek, but it's still not as easy of a shot to hit for the T off if he peeks in case you do this. You could also go to the left side and have this angle where they're going to check the left one first and then they're going to run into your scope. Or you could peek a little bit in the middle of the window. Or you could jump on this ledge. This is an absolutely incredible peek. I really like to do this. In case somebody comes out, he usually just hits your legs because of the adjustment to the head being so high, which is very, very uncommon for any window player to be there. Or if you have a top spawn, as just shown, you can jump on the bench and do this peak. Or you could even jump out towards connector and be so early that you're going to catch somebody off guard like catch, and he's dead. You could even block the smoke, maybe with your body, or you can do it with the Molotov. The Molotov needs to be, the window needs to be opened here, and you can just throw it, something like that. So as soon as the window smoke pops, it's going to get extinguished by the fire. And then you're going to have a little bit of an angle where the T's still have to worry about. And even nowadays, in case people hear the sound cue, they're not going to run out middle like that. And you're going to have rather free control from the get-go. Cool. The window player. He's also the one that is rotating off. The connector player usually stays. He's the one that rotates off towards ticket or helps A and stuff like that. Now to the connector player. We're going to swap back to our M4. Hello. I am pretending to be a connector player right now. In case you have the better spawn of the two A players, you flash middle. Or generally, the connector player flashes middle. You do not flash middle here. This flash is not so good because people still have more or less half a second or something of a time window when they peak top middle that they might not get blind. You are flashing in between those two. Just a left click jump throw. Easy. Then you can use your smoke in case the window player jumps out, maybe extinguish the Molotov. You can just throw it here. Play that one way smoke for underground. It's sort of a one way common, but still usable. Or you can throw it here. Whatever, just throw it something like that. Or you can just right click out a smoke. So you can run in front of that smoke, peek underground, jump on the bench, peek somebody coming short, and yada, yada, yada. There's a million of different possibilities as a connector player. What you just have to do is be present and be a pain in the ass for anyone. Sometimes go out, sometimes not, sometimes hold the angle, sometimes play outside of connector if they pressure connector really heavily. Just be a pain. Be unpredictable, get the peaks, be confident with it. And flash middle. Please, anybody. Flash middle. Every round flash middle for the window player. Middle flash, middle flash, middle flash, flash middle, flash middle, flash middle. Always flash middle. The A player. The A player does not smoke ramp early. A flashbang over the top, they can ruin for the smoke, they can peek you. Done. This smoke really early is... In my books, a waste of utility. I I don't know. It's like smoking ramp is basically inviting them to just push through with a good spawn. What you instead do is you Molotov ramp. You don't have to have a lineup. There, there are lineups for it. There are probably better lineups than that for it. But you can just bounce it off the wall and just throw into ramp so that the people are not early peeking you. And if they early peek you, they're that low HP that you can just simply execute them with one shot headshot. However, A players need to be versatile. It's the same as the B players. You're not the one who takes the first fight. Unless you want to do some openings or do something different that you can peek palace or you peek ramp behind the Molotov because you're really close and you see through while the other ones aren't seeing through. There's a lot of possibilities, but generally you are the one that is the anchor on the bomb site. You're the one that stays alive. You're sitting close ramp maybe. You're holding them out. You can sit under shadow. You can flash out from here. Or like, you just peek. You just make noise. You don't make noise. It's all up to you. Just stay alive. Try to stay alive as long as you can. Even when an A execute, you can play on default here. You can play on top of it here. Just hold it like this maybe. You can even play. This is an angle that I really hate to play against. 
because the elevation of the head is so high again. This is an angle like if somebody comes out ramp or palace. I don't think a palace player is going to adjust that quickly. Or you can play the off, off, off angle of get right here in the corner. So in case they walk out, easy kill as well. Or you can play close triple. What I really hate to play against is A players who are tucking themselves on triple and they're not showing themselves whatsoever. So if there's a 3v4 or something and they're just hiding there on triple in case somebody walks across this, I, I can't, I don't know. I can't fathom that, but a, triple, a player on A who's hiding on triple is a pain to play against. You could also just play from ticket if nothing works and you can play retake, but there's so many different possibilities also sandwich. Just mix it up, spice it up, and the same as a B player. Stay alive, feed the information early that you get, and then, yeah, ask for the flushes. An A player needs to be in a synergy with a connector player. So we're just, yeah, general things on Mirage that I feel are missing that you 100% know, but uh, people don't really do. One, if there's an A execute, the B player is not the first one to rotate, it's the short player. Also, the window player or the connector player might just still check middle instead of both of them spamming through the smoke. Like if you see your connector player go stairs and spam through the smoke, you as a window player, you can take those two seconds to still watch middle if you want to. Or window player, take a Molotov in this corner. That is gonna delay the push a little bit and you're gonna support the A player like that. Or, as a window player, you can just come into this corner here, you see the trajectory already, and just flash something like that in front of Tedris. So the shadow player can get a couple of easy kills there. It's all about supporting your A player initially, and not just vividly going through the corners and being like, Rah! Shit, I got one, but I got traded, and now the bomb site is open because my A player didn't have any support at all as well. Same goes for the connector player as well. And in case there's A smokes, check the rotations, all this kind of stuff. For instance, if your B player is running Ticket, you don't need to run after him on Ticket, so you're two on Ticket. You can stay in jungle and play from that angle as well. There's lots of these things like this flash for Tetris, just generally to support your A player. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect. You can also flash above the bench. I do that, Molly, always in the corner. So they're gonna be stopped a little bit. Or then I try to peek on timing through bench. I'm like, let's say jungle smoke is lying. Right? I walk here and then I play this instead of widening completely. If so, nobody's peeking our palace or if nobody's running through that angle, then I can try to get a cheeky kill around that. Just generally the rule of thumb, what a lot of people are doing wrong on Mirage or generally in Counter Strike, is that they commit. If a guy's on default, A smokes, he just commits to a fight like really wide. So he either gets the kills or gets killed. Instead of just Jiggling it a little bit, like taking the fight here, maybe taking the fight here, then going to the corner, taking the fight here, taking the fight here, taking the fight here, holding close, taking the fight, taking Palos fight. Most of the people are always committing. Like a default player committing like this, it's not gonna happen that he's gonna get all five kills unless the enemy has like both shoes tied, they fell over and their face is in the ground. A nice little spawn that you can abuse as well is if you're around here, you can just, with the timing, peek into ramp, you're usually or 99% earlier than the ramp peak. You can get the peak if nobody's coming there. You're still gonna have the timing to be able to peak top mid. I just would advise to not peak this angle. The amount of times you get picked by an AWP there just because he's holding is unreal. Uh, my brain is fried. I think I've talked about everything that I feel is essential that you should do or should know in Mirage. I hope that either helped a couple of people or that at least I reminded a couple of people towards the basics on Mirage. Like, I realize that most of the people watching this most likely know what I'm talking about, but you know, a reminder once in a while doesn't hurt. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll yeah, see you in the next video. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe with the bell so you will be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you.